Let's pick things up there for tonight's political insider. Joining me, Kevin Cirilli, reporter for The Hill. Kevin, President Obama has limited his commentary on the GOP presidential primary to policy differences with Republicans. This time, he engaged candidates directly. Why and why now? Well, you know, that's a great question, Morris, and I think what it comes down to is that President Obama is increasingly frustrated with the crop of Republican fields, and obviously it's going to be dominating the news cycle in the next couple of weeks. But that being said, I think that with such a crowded field, Democrats are going to try to lump everybody together. We saw the DNC release an ad in which they were attacking Mr. Donald Trump by, but also on his immigration policy by also lumping all of the other candidates with him. And I think today with President Obama attacking former Governor Huckabee and again Mr. Trump trying to lump all of the crowded field together to draw that contrast to the presumed frontrunner, of course, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Obama also singled out Texas Senator Ted Cruz for saying the nuclear deal makes Obama, not Iran, the leading state sponsor of terrorism. That's a pretty outrageous comment. Are candidates like Cruz simply desperate to steal a headline from Donald Trump? Over in a rare Sunday session on the Senate floor, we saw Mr. Cruz, Senator Cruz, I'm sorry, uh, criticize for, uh, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. He made a blistering critique on the Senate floor on Sunday as well as Friday. You know, this, I think, is, is part of a larger trend that we're seeing within the Republican Party, which is a lot of dissatisfaction with the establishment here in Washington. And we've talked about this frequently, Morris, between the Tea Party and the more establishment-minded Republicans. I think that, again, with such a crowded field, it begs the question, who is leading the Republican Party right now? And all of that's being sorted out. If you look at Congress, if you look at the crop of Republicans running for, for president, it's a very interesting time in terms of Republican leadership, both from a presidential standpoint as well as from a congressional standpoint. You talked about their weekend worker shenanigans, so let's move <laughs> on to the Export-Import Bank. It's a good word for it, shenanigans. I like In it. In a rare <laughs> session on Sunday, the Senate voted to advance legislation that would reauthorize the controversial institutions, the Export-Import Bank. We've talked about it a lot here before on Capital Insider. Critics call it corporate welfare. What's the latest on that? Well, the business community vehemently opposes allegations that it's corporate welfare, and they've been able to um, forge a coalition with Democrats, everybody except Senator Bernie Sanders, mind you, and moderate Democrats. The votes really are there in terms of the Senate and the House, but in terms of the politicking behind the scenes, conservatives have really kind of made this their uh, issue du jour, if you will, and they've argued that it wastes taxpayer money and that it's a federally backed bank that is corporate welfare. But I don't really expect this to be reauthorized this week. I think that it was uh, the, the lawmakers attempted to attach it to the Senate Highway Transportation Funding Bill. Earlier today, House Speaker John Boehner essentially told Leader McConnell that that would not be happening uh, and that the House already passed a short term transportation funding bill. So basically what that means is we're going to have all of these fights, Morris, in just a couple of weeks after the August recess, and it's going to be one heck of a fall. I just think people should start following the money. Viewers at home, find out who's getting the, the, the most out of this Export-Import Bank. Boeing. And surprise, it'll be a state where one of these senators uh, would be voting for it. All right, the vote pitted Ted Cruz against members of his own party. Tell us more about his ongoing feud. And you mentioned Mitch McConnell. What's that about? And I know, and McConnell was also pushing for the bank, wasn't he? Absolutely. Well, publicly, Leader McConnell said that he uh, was personally opposed to the bank, but he would not stand in the way of there being a vote on the floor for it. Now, Senator Cruz says that Leader McConnell promised the Republicans in the Senate that there would not be a vote on the export import bank, which again is attached to an amendment uh, of, as part of the highway bill. And Mitch McConnell says that that's not what happened. And so there was a pretty much Senator Cruz accused Leader McConnell of lying, and he did. He made this accusation on, on the Senate floor. So you then had Republicans coming to Leader McConnell's defense. You had more conservative members coming to Senator Cruz's defense. It really was a rare case of infighting that we typically see outside of the Senate chamber, but to see it unfold on the Senate floor was quite rare and uh, I, I would, uh, very rare and to say the least. It was something that you would expect to see on a cable news show and not to see lawmakers on the Senate floor engaging in. All right, it's good to get your insight. Kevin Cirilli, reporter for The Hill. We'll stay on top of it from here. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good one.